Welcome to our video on nutrition in the 70s. I won't read the title yet because our first question actually relates to the title. Could you please explain the crazy title of this video? Um, the title being Kansas Watermelons and Naturopathic Medical School. So what does that mean? Well, at the end of the 60s I was explaining a little bit about, among other things, what I was eating then. And I was, I was eating brown rice and salads and raw milk and a lot of fish and that helped me begin getting over my very severe gastrointestinal problems. Um, so it was oriented in the right direction but I was still eating lots of uh, fruit juice and too much fruit and a little sugar here and there and brownies and things, you know, and I really had a lot of cleaning up of my diet to do. So in the 70s, um, I kind of carried on with that and, and gradually refined it. Um, and the Kansas Watermelons and Naturopathic Medical School, you see, around 1975, I had gotten well enough to begin thinking that really you could heal things with food. You could heal serious medical problems with food. Um, and I had started to read about it and, and learn indeed that there had been, uh, there was a whole tradition of doctors and uh, other healers who, who helped people achieve that. And I decided that I wanted to become a doctor at that point. I was kind of drifting. I had graduated from um, MIT with a degree in, in um, in design, uh, but wasn't really working in that field. And uh, deciding to become a doctor who used natural methods led me to discover that there really was no, there were no medical schools that allowed you to do that. If you wanted to go to medical school, you learned to use drugs and do all the usual doctorly things. Then I discovered naturopathic medicine and that there were indeed a couple of, um, well at that time there's only one naturopathic medical school, there are four now. So I went to naturopathic medical school, and at that time, the National College of Naturopathic Medicine was in um, the, the, the clinical two years, the third and fourth year were in Portland, Oregon, and the first two years, the, the, the study years, where you study all of the, you know, the, the biology and the psychology and the anatomy and the physiology and so on and so forth, the pathology, um, were at, in Kansas, in Wichita, Kansas. So there, of course, Wichita, Kansas is uh, the center of a, a huge farm belt, and this coincided with the years when I was uh, not completely vegetarian, but close. I mean, I'm six feet, I go about 175 now, comfortable weight for me, has been for many years. In 1975, six feet, 135, uh, was not a, a picture of glowing health. Um, too many vegetables, too much fruit, not enough animal food. Um, so the watermelons, I mean, there were times when I lived on watermelon for two or three weeks at a time. And I felt about as good as a 135-pound six-footer can feel. Um, I thought I was fine, but I certainly know now in retrospect that that was not really where it was at. Um, so that explains the title of this video. And, and uh, before I go further into the 70s, I'll look at the next question and, and we'll see what that leads us to. Well, why did you become a naturopathic doctor? I think I answered that one in the last, in the last um, phrase, the last question. But, you know, there was one thing I remember distinctly thinking to myself, well, I've got to make a living some way. And if I can just make enough to get by as a naturopathic physician, um, I'll be happy with that. I can do something satisfying. I can do something that makes me feel like I'm, I'm really helping other people, that I can... Uh, you know, kind of sleep okay with at night. And that, that essentially was why I was pretty idealistic, I think, and that's essentially why I became a naturopathic doctor. Um, when I was going through school, what major changes did my diet take as I learned more about nutrition? Well, unfortunately, I did not learn, I did not learn what I needed to learn from school. I, made, I mainly learned what I needed to learn by exploring on my own the various different books and authors and healers that I discovered. In particular, I discovered Weston Price's work. He wasn't taught in naturopathic school. I discovered Pottinger and uh, Sir Robert McCarrison, all the people I write about, wrote about in my first book and further in my second book. And by reading and studying their work, 
I, I discovered what I needed to know about, really know about natural foods in order to get well. And I made major changes, and primarily in the direction of, of eating a lot more animal food and, and starting to go from 135 to 175 and, and, and be very comfortable with that. And there's a lesson there. No matter wh where you go to school or what you study or who you study with, you have to be open to your own ideas and not just rely on what you get from um, your mentors. It's great to have good mentors, but um, truly, great, truly great mentors are very few and far between, and you might not be lucky enough to connect with one, um, in which case you've got to use books and be willing to judge from books what it is that seems most reasonable to you. So there's an old saying from Winston Churchill, most men occasionally stumble over the truth, but usually they just get up and carry on as if nothing had happened. So, next question? One more. I, I really like the fact that you say you brushed on vegetarianism. If you stopped eating meat, per se, in the 70s, mm. how did your body react when you started picking it up again? I started to gain the weight that I needed and get more strength and energy and really feel good, finally. So any more questions about the 70s? I think I have been through... Do you like Led Zeppelin? <laughs> Led Zeppelin was 60s. That, that hit me in the 60s anyway. Sorry, I wasn't born yet. And that's a, a great example of a band that had three or four really, I think, great songs and then a lot of noise other than that. 